Hello, my name is Jonathan Chung. I'm professor of radiology at the University of Chicago. I'm also a section chief of cardiopulmonary imaging, as well as the vice chair for quality in our department. I have the pleasure of reviewing the Radiological Society of North America expert consensus statement on reporting chest CT findings related to COVID-19. This statement is endorsed by the Society of Thoracic Radiology, the American College of Radiology, and of course, RSNA. We published this late last month in Radiology, Cardiothoracic Imaging. Though this statement originally was written to support reporting language on CT, Eventually, it was augmented to also include specific imaging categories as it pertains to COVID-19. Some of the issues with COVID-19 is that we actually don't know what best practice is as of yet. So some of my commentary on this video will obviously reflect my personal opinion, but I'll do my best to let you know when that is the case. So let's get right into it. This is a four-tier system, typical, indeterminate, atypical, and negative for pneumonia. I do my best to adhere to this framework on CT in patients who are suspected of having COVID-19 infection. I encourage you to go look it up yourself. Go ahead and Google this. Pretty easy to find. But for the sake of education, we can go through these specific imaging categories just to give you an idea of what COVID-19 does look like on imaging. So the typical imaging appearance of COVID-19 is listed here. So first off, you have your peripheral bilateral ground glass opacity. When you have that ground glass opacity with superimposed intralobular lines, oftentimes it takes on this crazy paving appearance. If you have that, it's a typical imaging appearance, very often described in this COVID-19 pneumonia. Also included in this category is when you have rounded morphology of multifocal pulmonary opacities, usually of ground glass opacity, but you can also have some superimposed consolidation or intralobular lines as well. And then if you have pulmonary opacities that have a reverse halo configuration or the atoll sign, then this supports the diagnosis of organized pneumonia, which at least on imaging, it seems like some of these patients fall into. They present later on disease with this organized pneumonia-like morphology. So here's an example of the peripheral ground glass opacity that we see in these patients with COVID-19, pretty self-explanatory. This does have maybe a little bit of a basal predominance, though that is not part of the consensus statement, but certainly peripheral, certainly ground glass, certainly bilateral. So this would be highly consistent with COVID-19. Here's an example from the Radiopedia case file. There are a lot of cases in Radiopedia, but again, ground glass opacity in the lung periphery. In a patient with suspected COVID-19 infection, this would be a typical imaging appearance. Here's an example of the rounded opacities within the lungs, shown bilaterally within the lung parenchyma. And so many of these areas have ground glass opacity, but there is superimposed consolidation as well. But this would be a typical imaging appearance for COVID-19. Another example from Radiopedia, again, we have these rounded pulmonary opacities, more, more consolidation than ground glass, but I think there is some ground glass superimposed on it. You can see through some of these areas, even the more consolidated areas. So I think there is some ground glass opacity. And so again, the, the, the consensus statement leaves a little room for interpretation. In my book, I would still say this is a typical imaging appearance. Another example from Radiopedia here, again, other rounded opacities within lungs bilaterally. Again, clearly here, we do have some ground glass opacity with superimposed consolidation. Here's a patient again with bilateral ground glass opacity as well as consolidation. In fact, true to, true, true to this case, the main player here really is the consolidation and not the ground glass opacity, but certainly there is ground glass opacity. And again, in my book, if you have a patient who is a high pretest probability for COVID-19 and you have this imaging pattern with this mix of mostly consolidation, but some ground glass opacity in the lung periphery, I think you can put this in a typical imaging appearance. Another example from Radiopedia here, again, ground glass opacity in the lung periphery, a little bit of superimposed consolidation as well. Here, clearly the the star of the show is ground glass opacity. This would be a typical imaging appearance. Another example from Radiopedia. Again, there are multiple examples in the Radiopedia case file of COVID-19. I encourage you to, to look there. Again, bilateral ground glass opacity, a little asymmetric, right rather than left. Some superimposed consolidation as well, but again, typical imaging appearance. Here's a patient with left lower lobe consolidation and ground glass opacity. And what I'm trying to outline here is the fact that this actually has a reversed halo configuration, almost a target toid appearance. You actually have this central area of consolidation 
shown here, surrounding ground glass opacity and this rim of consolidation. But overall, this would be consistent with the reverse halo sign, also known as the atoll sign, and is suggestive of organized pneumonia, which based on the literature, these patients seem to develop, at least on imaging. This is a patient with reversed halo or atoll sign who has cryptogenic organized pneumonia. This patient did not have COVID-19, but I'm just trying to demonstrate to you sort of the classic imaging appearance of what the reversed halo or atoll sign looks like. So you have this surrounding rim of consolidation, central ground glass opacity. Oftentimes the rim is incomplete, the areas of consolidation, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be circumferential, uh, but it has to, you have to have, in my book, a uh, significant amount of peripheral rim consolidation with a central ground glass opacity to call it reverse halo. Here's a less recognized pattern of organized pneumonia, the perilobular consolidation. And so typically I see this perilobular consolidation at the lung bases in case of organized pneumonia that show it. And so this has been described in the literature, but people really don't talk about it that much. But certainly I see this and more often than not, it does turn out to be organized pneumonia. And I've now seen it in at least a couple cases of COVID-19. Here's a patient with COVID-19 pneumonia. And so again, not as pretty as that last example that I showed you, but here we see basal predominant consolidation with this suggestion of some perilobular consolidation with some central lobular sparing. So when you have the consolidation that are demarcating the outside of secondary pulmonary lobules at the lung bases, you should be thinking about organized pneumonia. And again, with the high pretest probability of COVID-19, this is something that you should be thinking about very highly. All right, so the next category is the indeterminate appearance. And so these are not cases where you're saying that the patient has been ruled out or it's unlikely. These are cases where it's not a high pretest probability based on imaging in the sense that it has not been described as much in the literature, these imaging patterns, but still you would be suspicious. And I think that comes through in the reporting language. And again, I encourage you to go ahead and look up that article in radiology cardiothoracic imaging, pretty easy to find. So what are these imaging findings? Well, first of all, no findings that suggest a typical imaging appearance. And then things like multifocal or diffuse or parahylar or unilateral ground glass opacity, whether or not you have consolidation. And then a few very small areas of ground glass opacity with a non-rounded and non-peripheral distribution. So again, point to the fact that you can't have features that are typical for COVID-19 to be part of this imaging category. And so here's some examples from the literature, specifically that paper in radiology cardiothoracic imaging, the consensus paper that we wrote. And so here's some examples of just a random axial distribution of ground glass opacity. So not peripheral predominant, but still, if you have high clinical suspicion for COVID-19, you would not exclude this patient for that infection. Obviously, you would actually suspect it pretty highly, but again, it's not the typical imaging appearance, and that's why there's this second imaging category. But you can also see this indeterminate imaging category with other disease processes. For example, here in drug toxicity, we see this pretty random pattern of bilateral ground glass opacity, very nonspecific. There's another example here. We see drug toxicity, presenting with diffuse ground glass opacity, some areas of a little bit of central lobular nodularity as well, as well as pneumocystis pneumonia, demonstrating diffuse ground glass opacity with relative subpleural sparing. Another example here, this patient actually ended up having COVID-19 pneumonia. Patient has bilateral areas of consolidation and ground glass opacity, but not in a typical imaging appearance. We don't see areas that are peripheral predominant. And certainly we don't see areas which are nodular in their morphology. These are more amorphous or perhaps even areas that kind of look mass-like, but certainly not focal nodular morphology in terms of the pulmonary disease that we're seeing here. So this would be put in the indeterminate category. But again, if you have a high pretest probability of COVID-19, this is a case where certainly that you would suspect COVID-19 infection in this patient. So here is our next category, atypical imaging appearance. And so these are patients who have no findings of typical or indeterminate imaging features, and then have other imaging findings that are suggestive of something else, something that other than COVID-19. We're not saying that these patients can't have COVID-19, because if you have a lot of patients who have a specific disease process, 
And every once in a while, you're going to have someone presenting with an atypical imaging appearance. But if you see any of these things, you should really be thinking about an alternative diagnosis before COVID-19. So for example, if you have isolated low bar segmental consolidation without ground glass opacity, if you have discrete small nodules, sort of like diffuse nodular lung disease, specifically if they're central lobular or tree and bud in their distribution and morphology, this is very, very unlikely in the setting of COVID-19. That being said, if you, you have tree and bud opacities or central lobular nodules, which very well may represent aspiration, we know that you can have aspiration superimposed on COVID-19. It happens, right? Aspiration is very common. And if COVID-19 is common in your patient population, then the two coming together, it's not unheard of. Lung cavitation, also pretty unusual in the setting of COVID-19 pneumonia. And if you have smooth interlobular septal thickening with pleural fusions, obviously you would be thinking about left side of heart failure or pulmonary edema rather than COVID-19 first on your differential diagnosis. So here's an example for radiopedia where we see mainly this focal area of right lower lobe consolidation. There is a small ground glass focus here as well within the right middle lobe, but I, I think that's so minor, I think you have to discount it in terms of the imaging categorization. And so here we would think that more likely than not, this patient just had some sort of bacterial community acquired pneumonia. Again, could this be COVID-19? Yes, it could be COVID-19, but we wouldn't put it first on the differential. Here's another patient. Uh, this is actually from my clinic. And so the apices, we see some ground glass opacity, kind of round in a morphology. And so this, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, this could be COVID-19. But as we get down lower and lower into the lungs, we see that really the main player here is these central lobular nodules. If we look at the MIP, we see that indeed it is central lobular. There is almost complete subpleural sparing in regard to nodule lung disease. And some areas actually represent tree and bud nodules, this branching morphology down here, implying things in the airway, debris or pus or fluid in the airways. And so this tree and bud central lobular pattern, highly unusual in COVID-19. So I thought, well, could this be COVID-19 plus something else? But it really, the main star of the show here, the main player, the main finding really is the central lobular and tree and bud nodularity. So that's how we dictated. We, we said that this was going to be unlikely to be COVID-19. This had an atypical imaging appearance. And so this patient actually ended up having something else, had parainfluenza. Another example, just tree and bud opacities. Just want to make sure that you guys understand what tree and bud looks like. I know most of you guys do, but just in case you don't. Tree and bud opacities have these branching morphology. They are a subset of central lobular nodularity. And so by definition, they should give you relative subpleural sparing. So see how these nodules, they don't actually extend to lung periphery. You got to ignore these areas of patchy ground glass opacity. So ignore those areas. But the nodules themselves, they give you actually here like nearly complete subpleural sparing. And that's because these tree and bud nodules are a subset of central lobular nodularity, which by definition should spare the lung periphery. Well, that brings us to the end of this discussion. Just want to let you know, we are in the process of creating a second video that addresses COVID-19 issues as it pertains to the radiologist. And the format is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more of a QA type format. So much more discussion, fewer images, but I still, I think, content that you guys will appreciate. Please look for that in the next couple of weeks. If you want to read more about COVID-19 or see many more cases, last time I checked, I think there are over 60 cases on the website. Take a look at the excellent write-up on the Radiopedia website. Special shout out to Daniel Bell and others for their hard work in putting it together and keeping the website up to date. Thank you and best health to everyone.